Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this afternoon's broadcast of the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony. This is the third one of these that have been done, and we're getting ready for the induction ceremony to start here very sh shortly. Chairman of the uh, Selection Committee, Tony McClamrock, will be the MC for today, and he'll be greeting everyone here very shortly. And again, uh, st very, very strong class of inductees this year to the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Among those, uh, Dale Earnhardt Sr., the seven-time NASCAR champion. Uh, Roy Thomas, a 1953 graduate of Concord High, played in the uh, East-West, or actually was scheduled to play in the East-West Shrine Bowl. Uh, went to Wake Forest University, or actually turned down offers to go to Wake Forest University to work for his family. Donnie Whittington, the longtime athletic director here at the Cabarrus Boys and Girls Club. Carl A. Widenhouse, a power boat racer, he won over 105 awards. Barbara Smith Robertson, or Skeet as she was known, saw a really nice uh, article in one of the Raleigh area newspapers about her. And again, uh, a quotation from a sports writer, Mrs. Robertson's very life, her compassion, her kindness, her wit, and her wisdom made her made this whole world a better place. And again, uh, that is Barbara Smith Robertson. Arden Ray, uh, who passed recently, uh, the uh, uh, great uh, athlete from Lenore Ryan, also uh, was a award-winning coach here, won the state championship at Mount Pleasant and coached at other schools. Natrone Means, the NFL running back from Central Cabarrus. Benny Arnold Moose, who was one of the uh, sport athletes from Mount Pleasant, uh, one of the members of the state uh, championship team in 1964 at Mount Pleasant. That long, long list of awards. Olympian Melissa Morris and Howard from A.L. Brown uh, has won bronze medals in the Olympics, won all kinds of track and field awards. Amy Privet Perko, an outstanding basketball, softball, and tennis player in high school, played at Wake Forest University, uh, now uh, working uh, with the Knight Commission, or had been working with the Knight Commission for intercollegiate athletics and uh, working on rules, and now living and married in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Lance Smith, one of the great linemen coming out of A.L. Brown, played for LSU, played in the NFL for 12 seasons. And Haskell Stanback, also an NFL player, an A.L. Brown wonder. Haskell Stanback played at Tennessee, then went on to play for the Atlanta Falcons, the Cincinnati Bengals, and others. And again, uh, those are uh, actually two more. Crystal Cox Crump uh, recently inducted into the North Carolina uh, Coaches Association Softball Hall of Fame led Central Cabarrus to state championships in softball, uh, played at North Carolina, and again, uh, that's a Crystal Cox Crump. And Margaret Haggerty, a 1940 graduate of Concord High School, renowned for Guinness Book of World Record holder. Uh, she's run marathons and countless distance runs after the age of 60, and uh, she is uh, the oldest member, of, oldest living member of the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame at the age of 91. Uh, saw her here just a few moments ago, and several of the other uh, folks are here uh, today. Bob Maldon will be on our pr program today. He's just walking in, and uh, again, we should be ready to get underway with the ceremony here momentarily. Uh, if you're listening to the live portion of this audio, we will be uh, having video later on. If you're watching the videotape, obviously you see that we have the video. But uh, a good crowd gathering, and we expect even more as the ceremony gets underway here at the Boys and Girls Club. I'm Mark Plymouth. Thanks for joining us on Radio Free Cabarrus, or if you've tuned in to the Independent Tribune's website, we'll also have more details and story coming up in Sunday's Independent Tribune, one of the sponsors for Radio Free Cabarrus on uh, many of our broadcasts. And, of course, we always have high school football, basketball, baseball all coming up um, on our broadcast. If you're not familiar with it, uh, just check our website out from time to time. You'll see some of the things we're doing, including high school football coming up on Friday night. Uh, West Rowan and Concord this week, Central Cabarrus and Cox Mill as well. We plan to have three games next week, and we'll announce those later on. But, again, still waiting for the start. We're just a couple of minutes after 5 o'clock. But Tony McClamrock, Gene Furr, one of the committee members, taking some, photo some photos of today's festivities. And Gene, of course, an award-winning photographer. And uh, he is uh, here as well taking some photos. Look for James Nick's photos coming up in Sunday's Independent Tribune. And again, thank you for joining us here on Radio Free Cabarrus and High School Cube. It's a great occasion here. We'll let the uh, participants and let Tony McClamrock tell you all about this as we get just a little bit uh, closer to the uh, 
actual start. We're waiting for just a couple more people to stream in here at the Boys and Girls Club. The uh, Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame began uh, just a few years ago. This is, again, the third class. 2011 was the first class, 2012 a year ago, and uh, got uh, a number of athletes who have been inducted. Uh, last year's inductees uh, included uh, Bill Ford, uh, Larry Honeycutt, Ethan Horton, Kelly Rose Kennedy, also Mike Morton, Jr., E.Z. Smith, Ick Alley, Billy Goodman, the great baseball player, Bear Little from here at the Boys Club, John McGinnis, Leroy Searcy. Back in 2011, the inductees to the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is uh, Kenneth Basinger uh, from Concord High, 57 graduate, Frank, W. Frank Cannon from Weinkauf High School, Quinn Troxler Dion from Concord High, Charlie Reimer, uh, saw his daughter here just a few moments ago. Uh, he was an inducted in the first class. Larry Satch Sedbury from Concord High, and Gene Verbal from Hartsell High. Gene, great baseball player living out in the Jackson Park area of Cabarrus County now, but those are your 2011 inductees. And, again, we're just very close to the festivities getting underway here. Um, some uh, outstanding inductees in this year's class, and you'll see uh, as they begin to talk about some of the things that the uh, folks have done uh, in their illustrious careers, not only what they did in high school uh, later on, and many of them still carrying on in community life across our uh, state uh, uh, and across the country, some of the wonderful things they've done. That's one of the things that the selection committee considers, not only uh, what you did in this sport, but what you've given back to the community. That's one of the reasons many of these people uh, uh, were outstanding in high school, but they were even more outstanding as coaches, as teachers, as uh, leaders in the community. And that's uh, one of the reasons you'll see some of these people inducted into the uh, Sports Hall of Fame today. The Sports Hall of Fame um, comes out of the Concord Museum downtown. If you know where the uh, uh, historic courthouse is, then... Uh, that is the location for the plaque that commemorates each of these. From time to time, there's displays of memorabilia. And uh, today we have, uh, as we were looking around, there's a display of memorabilia. Uh, Benny Moose particularly uh, featured in some of those, some pictures from the old days, some newspaper clippings, and some very nice stuff uh, from his illustrious career, the 1966 graduate of Mount Pleasant High. Ironically, he was uh, the, I don't know that it's ironic, but uh, he was the first East-West Shrine Bowl player from Cabarrus County to play in that game. Uh, again, that was back in 1966. Went on to Lenore Ryan College and then um, became a teacher and football coach and uh, just retired uh, recently. And again, that's Benny Arnold Moose, just one of them. The many inductees we have here for today. And again, we're waiting uh, just a couple more moments before we get started here. We'll have folks uh, still streaming in to the Boys and Girls Club here on Spring Street. And if you want to catch the end of this, if you happen to be in the area and want to come on out, uh, Spring Street in Concord, right off of Buffalo, real easy to get into. There's plenty of room here uh, today if you'd like to join us here at the Cabarrus Boys and Girls Club. And again, uh, see some motioning there, trying to get some of the folks up a little closer that are involved in the festivities, and we'll uh, have have the beginning of the ceremony here very shortly here. Tony McClamrock is uh, still working. with This year, one of the things that uh, you'll see is a slide presentation. This is new for the Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, Gene Fur helped compile this, uh, and it'll be uh, some photos and some uh, things about the different individuals who will be inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame today. And again, uh, we, in fact, uh, I've seen some of the Dale Earnhardt Sr. pictures, some really, really good pictures that uh, uh, show the uh, Intimidator, as he was called. But uh, Arden Ray, one of the inductees, uh, passed just a few, uh, just a couple of months ago. Arden Ray, uh, if you read in the... Uh, uh, Independent Tribune, some just some wonderful things said about the former coach and about all the many things that he did for the young people in this community. Um, you don't see many speedboat racers in the world, but a powerboat racer, Carl A. Widenhouse, one of the people to be inducted. A quote about Carl, 
Carl was known all over the seaboard as being the fast, hard driver to beat, but a true sportsman in every sense of the word. Looks like we're getting a little closer as we see still directed a little traffic up front. We can tell you that some of the sponsors for the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame, Barefoot Oil Company and BP here in Concord, Reliable Trailer Parts also in Concord by the Sundrop Bottling Company, Hawk Transportation LLC in Concord, Industrial Battery and Charger Incorporated, and Pots of Luck Flores. Those are just some of the sponsors for the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. You may want to know some of the Hall of Fame committee members. As we mentioned, Tony Clamrock is the chairman. Doug Harward is the, one of the members, along with Wayne Williams. And I think we're just about ready. Let's key this mic up and go. I had a principal one time tell me that when you stop talking, I'll start talking. Welcome to Donnie Whittington Gymnasium and the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. This is the third induction, and of course, we're really excited because we have 14 outstanding candidates this year. Right off the bat, we're going to have Bob Malden lead us in a prayer. Let us meditate on the good things that's happened to us over our lifetime and the good things that's coming our way. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this gathering today of people who have run fast, run hard, jumped high, run many miles, done many things, running on, uh, racing on the water, racing round tracks, people who have emblazoned our memories with wonderful stories that could be told. We thank you that we come together today to pay recognition to their achievements. We thank you for the committee that has put together this program. We thank you for all the people of this community in Cabarrus County and the high schools and the people who have coached and worked with these participants. We thank you for all your love. We are your children and we humbly pray that you will bless us and bless this night and may it create a new memory in our lives. We pray in Christ's name, amen. I'd also like to, to introduce Doug Harwood, who is going to uh, introduce some folks and also uh, uh, talk about some of the people that gave us the money to run this show. Thank you, Tony. Four years ago when we started um, the Hall of Fame, we had just a few people helping us. Four years later, we got over 40 people involved. Now, tonight, I can't thank everyone. If I don't thank you, uh, we know who you are, we know what you did, and we're very appreciative for it. I want to start off thanking Valerie Melton. Valerie, some of these people don't know you, some of them do. Valerie's in the back. Come over here in front, let people see you. Don't be bashful. This is, the, okay, that's far enough. This is Valerie. Uh, she gives us everything we need uh, to run this show. She gives us this beautiful facility. She gives us the office space, so we appreciate everything she does. I also want to thank three ladies that come in and get our hospitality room set up. Uh, Libby Williams, Patty Cochran, uh, Vanessa, Vanessa Lynch. Now this is the third year these girls have come in and done this, and they're getting pretty good at it. And we've got plenty of food, we've got plenty of drink, so everyone is invited, so please come and uh, visit us. Now our sponsors, uh, we couldn't do this without our sponsors, uh, Larry Fink, uh, Gene Eisenhower, Leonard Fry, Terry Earnhardt, uh, Rick McClamrock gave us these flowers. And I understand the flowers will go to the uh, club uh, after the meeting. Something wrong there. Testing one, two. Um, I, I, I was hoping our sponsors would be here. I don't see any of them. I, is any of our sponsors here? Is Leonard Fry here? Terry uh, Earnhardt. Are you here, Terry? Will you stand up, please? 
This is Terry Earnhardt, our industrial battery in charge out of Canap out of Charlotte. Thank you. I, I don't understand Larry Fink and Gene Eisenhower not being here. They were our sponsors last year, uh, and they were very generous to us. And we picked up a new sponsor, John King of Sundrop. And uh, John, I talked to him several weeks ago. He said he had a prior commitment. He would try to be here if he could. But if y'all see these people, tell them that we appreciate what they've done for us. Now, I saw a couple of the past inductees for the last two years. Will y'all stand up and be recognized? I saw uh, Bill Ford. <laughs> Harry, yeah, Harry Honeycutt, thank you, sir. Larry, Larry Honeycutt out of Mount Pleasant. Uh, Bill Ford, stand back up, Bill. Now, can we pick them or, or not? Uh, last year, we inducted Bill into the Hall of Fame. Just weeks later, he had a ball field named after him in, uh, in Concord. So we appreciate you coming, Bill. Uh, Tony wanted me to uh, thank a few people. Uh, Joanne uh, Garnerman of the museum where we keep our plaque. Uh, did I pronounce that right, Joanne? Yes, you did. Uh, Brad Yelton. Uh, Brad is our Tar Heel media company. He set up our uh, system here, and he furnished our screen. We appreciate him. And Scott Paget. I don't think the mayor's here, Tony. See here. And Brian Tyson, the Cabarrus County Athletic Director. Is he here? Y'all well, he, know these people. Tell them that we, we call their names out. We mad as hell at them for not coming. <laughs> did I get everybody, Tony? I think I did. Yeah. Yeah, I got everyone. Um, the committee. I want to thank everyone on the committee. There's ten of us. And we each have a function to do, and we do the function separately. But occasionally we come uh, together and we uh, look these applications over and check them for blemishes, make sure that everything's all right. But we did find a blemishes on uh, Haskell Standback's application. Amy Pergo, we found a blemish on her application. Melissa Howard, we found a one on hers and uh, Amy Pergo and Lance Smith. I believe I missed Lance Smith. But we, we, we got together on it and we didn't know what to do about the blemishes. But at the end, we realized that they couldn't do anything about it. So we decided not to do anything about it. They're all from Canapolis. <laughs> Little humor there, Haskell. I cannot believe this man's 60 years old. He, I, it was just two, two months ago I was watching him in A.L. Brown. Becky McClamrock. Becky, for the third year now, has done our program, our medallions, and our certificates, and she's getting real good at it. This program is a first-class program. I saw the program from the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame, and it, it won't even touch this. So we appreciate Becky's effort. And uh, Mark Clemens, uh, we could not get any publicity from the Tribune until he came on as the sports writer, and he has helped us a lot. Now, Mark is uh, taping this now. This will be on his uh, website, Radio Free Cabarrus. So you, if you get bored and go to sleep out there, you can pick it up on his website. Now, that leads us to... Um, The inductees, uh, and believe me when I say this, we would be nothing without y'all. And I especially want to thank uh, Teresa Earnhardt for being here. She oversees a large corporation, and for her to give up her uh, afternoon and visit with her, we certainly appreciate it. Um, now, Teresa also assists in the uh, Earnhardt Foundation, and I have a, just a real brief uh, statement here. The Dale Earnhardt Foundation was formed in 2002. 
and was established to continue Dale's lifelong commitment to children, education, and environmental wildlife prevention. Currently, the Dale Earnhardt Foundation is working to develop 700 acres in Iredale County, and it's a 25-acre lake, and I found out today that the lake is filling up right now as we speak. Uh, the Dale Earnhardt Environmental Leadership Campus will open up opportunities for children and adults, and adults to train and enjoy outdoor activities for learning how to preserve and appreciate our natural environment. Now this is a statement from the foundation, Dale Earnhardt Foundation, and I was more than glad to read it. Now I'm going to uh, turn this over back to our chairman and uh, we got a surprise at the end of the program. Don't anybody leave. Uh, we got a big surprise for you. And well, I'll go ahead and tell you what the surprise is. Won't be a surprise. <laughs> Tony's going to sing God Bless America for us. Uh, no, you don't hear me sing. <laughs> yeah, as I said earlier, we're in the third year. And of course, every year it seems to get better. And this, this year is no exception to the rule. Now we try to do these inductees in alphabetical order because we're old school teachers. You know, everything in alphabetical order. So we're gonna start with Dale Earnhardt. The Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories Memories provide us an access to the past as it constantly recedes away from us. Tonight, we remember and honor the athlete and the life achievement of NASCAR legend, Ralph Dale Earnhardt Sr. Now, a lot of people haven't seen all the writing and the, all the dominations that I saw about Dale Earnhardt, and, I, and I'm, I was really shocked that he only raced for 13 years. And a lot of people don't realize this guy is a self, was a self-made man. I mean, he knew at 15 or 16 years of age what he wanted to do. Hate to see being an old school teacher, a guy drop out of school, but he did. He wanted to learn to drive a car and his dad was a card racer. Now, I think the NASCAR wants you to be at least 21 before you can race. But for 13 years while he was racing, he won 136 times. 136 times. He was Rookie of the Year. He was awarded by Governor Hunt the Longleaf Pine Award for Outstanding Citizen in North Carolina. A lot of people don't realize that. They just think about NASCAR. He was, one, he was voted one of the 50 greatest racers ever, NASCAR racers. He's in the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame already. Face it, he's a legend. Who does not remember number three? Everybody in here remembers number three. Now the thing that really turned me on about Dale is this. For 13, for, take that back, for seven straight years, he won the NASCAR championship. Seven straight years. That's just incredible. Tonight, we honor Dale Earnhardt Sr by introducing him into the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Would his wife come forward for the award? There's a mic right there. Teresa, would you like to say something? Yeah, take, give her that mic, uh, Harry, behind you.
Hi, everyone. Um, thank you to the committee and to all of Cabarrus County for honoring Dale like this. Um, the slogan of the Dale Earnhardt Foundation is continue the legend. And I'm so happy that at Cabarrus County can um, have this on permanent display to help us do just that at the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Um, and I'm honored to accept it on behalf of Dale. So thank you all. Thank you, Teresa. The Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories. Memories provide us access to the past as it constantly recedes away from us. Tonight, we remember and honor the coach, the athlete, the teacher, the counselor, and the life achieving of Arden Ray. In 1955 or 6, me and a bunch of guys were down on Coltrane Field practicing, getting ready for football for, to beat Kannapolis. And, and these three guys from Lenore Ryan showed up. Two of them were all Americans. One of them was Arden Ray. I'd never seen a specimen like Arden Ray. I thought to myself, God, I'd hate to play against that guy, but I sure would love to run the football behind him. But anyway, what made Arden so great, he came out of Pennsylvania and ended up at Lenore Ryan. And by the way, that's another story, by the way. And while he was there, he made All-American for three straight years. And then after graduation, he came to Cabarrus County to teach and coach. And what a blessing that has been. Two of the inductees tonight played for Arden Ray. Stand back. And Moose. He was an outstanding man. I, he is a friend of mine. And I'm telling you what, uh, I can just see why he, he took over Cabarrus County. He coached in just about all of the schools. Ended up at Mount Pleasant as a head football coach. The thing that his daughter told me that I did not know because I never heard this, but he loved to sing. And one of his favorite songs was Danny Boy. And I, I heard also the St. Kitts marching in, but I'm not going to swear to that. But anyway, Arden Ray was quite an addition to Cabarrus County. Tonight, I am honored to present to you Arden Ray being inducted into the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. And his daughter, Diana, is picking up the award. Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories. Memories provide us access to the past as it constantly recedes away from us. Tonight we remember and honor the athlete. Believe me, she was an athlete. A coach, teacher, counselor, and a very good life achiever. Barbara Smith Robinson. Now, I knew Barbara personally because she was a couple years ahead of me in high school. And you did not want to play her in 21. You did not want to play her in, in out because she, she had a nickname, Skeet. And that was the reason because she could really shoot a basketball. But after making all conference, she went on to Appalachian. Barbara is the first female that I ever met 
that you knew what season it was by what she had on. She was either cheerleading, she either had a basketball in her hand, a tennis racket, a, a bat, glove, ball. She, you knew the season. And, and, and while she was at Appalachian, they didn't have intermediate, uh, didn't have uh, basketball like they have today. Of course, they just played intermills. But after graduation, she coached and taught in a couple schools, but ended up in Zebulon, North Carolina. And a lot of people don't know where Zebulon is, but it's about 25 miles from Raleigh. I'm going to read a quote from a sports writer. Mrs. Robinson's very life, her compassion, her kindness, her wit, and her wisdom made this whole world a better place to live. They named the gym when Barbara passed away in her honor. Since 94, they have given an award out in her name to the outstanding student athlete. Barbara loved life. She loved her students, her family, and her friends. Tonight, I introduce you to Barbara Smith Robinson as a new inductee into the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Her sons are coming forward. The Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories. Memories provide us access to the past as it constantly recedes away from us. Today we remember and honor the athletic and the athlete and the life achievement of Roy Thomas. Roy, probably known around Concord for many, many years as the best lineman that ever graduated. In 1953, I remember seeing him when I was about 10 or 12 come off the football field. He's soaking wet. Never seen anything like it. He's soaking wet. He looked over to me, and I don't know if he had all of his teeth or not, but he was one of the horror films. He was a horror film to me. I never seen a horror film at that time. But everybody that played with him realized just how great a football player he was. He played an East-West game. He turned down the Shrine Bowl. He even turned down Wake Forest because he did not feel that he could do the job academically. And the other thing was his family was in need of him going to work. He sort of did like Leroy Searcy did. He came back, went to work, helped his family. After a couple of years, he joined the service. And when he came out of the service, he hooked up with Concord Telephone Company and spent the rest of his working days with Concord Telephone Company, except because of three things his son told me. He was a hard-driven, compassionate, loving, and a wonderful father, and he felt like that he needed to pick up a couple extra things, and he got into the swimming pool business and made, of course, extra money for his family. Tonight, I introduce you to Roy Thomas as a new inductee into the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Would you welcome your son, Randy? Hey, Doc. The Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories. Memories provide us access to the past as it constantly recedes away from us. Tonight, we remember the life achievement of Donnie Whittington. Donnie Whittington joined the boys club at five. And he is number five. I think Doug beat him out because Doug Harwood was number one. 
But Donnie spent most of his life, his breathing and eating life, right here at the Boys Club. He went off, he did not graduate from high school. He went to work for the Boys Club at 14. And then he went to the military and got his GED. Came back and went full time with the Boys Club. I don't know how many of you guys from Kannapolis met him, but I know that Bill Blanton, a couple years ago, when he came to town, he said, let's go by and see Donnie at the Boys Club. So a lot of the people that grew up here knew Donnie, went off, came back to see if Donnie was still working at the Concord Boys Club. I call Donnie Mr. Boys Club and Girls Club. I know that's contradictory to bear a little, but Donnie was here much longer. He is here almost 65 years. When I asked Donnie, he was on the first committee to be, to help me, he said, yes, sir. Not only did he help us, he got us a place to meet, and then he talked this place into letting us have a home. And then they named the gym after, and then we have in the place the induction in Donnie Whittington's gymnasium. He was one year, he was a Christ, uh, the Christmas uh, parade marshal, and in 2000 he received the National Service Award for his work with you. Tonight, Donnie Whittington is formally being introduced to the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Will Laney uh, or Kim come forward? Now, I don't know if you, uh, you saw the board when he came in, but, but there's a board outside here that's got all of the new and old members on it as you walk through the door. Uh, I was looking for it earlier. I thought it was going to be at the back, but I think it's over there. This one is a good one. Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories. Memories provide us access to the past as it constantly recedes away from us. Tonight we remember and honor the athlete and the life achievement of Carl A. Widenhouse. Now, Carl was like, he was like uh, Earnhardt, self-made man. He knew what he wanted to do. Graduated from Concord High in, 19, in, in 1918. He knew he wanted to be an engineer. I don't know what his funds were like, but I know that how he solicited to be able to get the certificate and, and the registration and all he went through. He asked people from the city that worked for the city of Concord, and then he opened a surveying company and from there, the Department of Highway uh, offered him a job, and then they taught him more. And he got what he wanted. And once he did that, now he's getting some age. He's getting some age, and, and he's, he's not a young man. He's 30 or a little bit older. You know, he's got a wife and three daughters. One of the daughters is standing, sitting right in front of me. But anyway, he... Uh, he started a concrete business. And how he got involved with racing is amazing. He was down at the PD River working on the bridge. And he looked out at all these guys racing boats. And that fascinated him. So by this time, he, was, he had funds. He had funds now. <laughs> he knew that it's going to cost him to get in this sport, but he did. And he had some really funny names for boats like Lazy Day, Slowpoke 1 and 2, Copperhead 1 and 2. But what really set him apart was the hyper plane racing. Now, most of you, I don't know if you know what high, but that's off the, off the surface, man, and you're moving. He won 105 regattas. And I don't know if they showed the trophies, but he has a, I, I saw the trophies, and he has a ton of them. He just has a ton of them. 
This is a quote from a sports writer. Carl was known all over the seaboard as being fast and hard driven to beat. Dale Earnhardt. You know, Dale was given the intimidator. But was a true sportsman in every sense of the way. Unfortunately, for Carl, like Ernie, he passed away in a wreck. A terrible, terrible accident at Roanoke Rapids in 1961. Tonight, we are honored to introduce Carl A. Widenhouse into the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame, and I am really happy to have one of Dale's friends and one that I watched when I was growing up, Dink Whitehouse, to come and receive the award. Oh, you're welcome. Now we're going to start with the new, uh, new, new inductees, and uh, we'd, we'd like to move this thing along as fast as possible because uh, I know how crowds are, and, I, and, and, and so if I'm moving too fast, slow me down, but uh, I'm pretty excited about what we just did because I was so proud of of the people that have passed away, and and uh, we couldn't have picked uh, six better, and uh, and now we're going to pick eight of the finest athletes. People don't realize how good Cabarrus County is. You know, I grew up over there at McAllister Field, and I saw all you guys play. Man, I tell you, it was with one athlete after the other, and and it, it, it it's just amazing to me. We had 50 applications this past year. And it's going to get better. We, we're just breaking the crust, you know? And you're just breaking the crust because there's, there's people that were really good. Somebody mentioned Bill Hatley tonight to me. My gosh, Bill Hatley played my neighborhood. He was a good little athlete, you know? And there, there's so many of us. And, and now we will recognize them. And they're getting the recognition that they really deserve. Hansel don't remember, but I play. I coached at Statesville when we came to Statesville in 1968 or 9 and took care of you guys. Remember that game? <laughs> 48 to nothing? <laughs> it's hard to forget that, right? Uh, so I'm just saying, uh, it's, uh, I know I am bragging. Uh, but anyway, yes. Uh, so so I don't remember, he was just a sophomore at the time, but boy, I tell you what, they were talking about him. You know, they were already talking about him. But let's start with uh, let's start with Crystal here. The Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories. Records provide access to the past as it constantly recedes away from us. Tonight we remember the athlete and the sports and life achievement of Crystal Cox Crump. Congratulations, she just got married about three weeks ago or a month ago. She is a, 
Here's something else. For the first time, we're all over the county. This Caber Central Cabarrus grad in 2002, the youngest. Tonight you're going to witness the youngest that we end up have, have induced and then the oldest that we are in inducting. She played varsity fast pitch softball. She is the first female ever induced Inter, in, induced to the sport, North Carolina High School Softball Hall of Fame. I understand it snowed that weekend, and the next weekend she received the award. I was going to that one because it was held in Apex. But anyway, tonight I'm going to talk about two situations. She has so many records. Golly, uh, it, it's just impossible to go over all the wonderful things she's done when she was growing up. But I'm going to talk about the 2001 and the 2002 softball state championship. All her teammates must have also been very good. And I don't know if she was a player of the year in 01, but I know she was in 02. And guess who was watching? Those darn Tar Heels. They come a-calling. And they gave her a nice scholarship to go to Chapel Hill and to, to play softball. While she was there, she a, appeared in 177 games. She won. She, she started 147. She won 96. She struck out in four years, 1,205. Do the math. That's, that's putting them down. That's just putting them down. Tonight, the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is proud to introduce Crystal Cox Crump as a new member in the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Oh, there you are. Congratulations. Oh, sure. This is very humbling and a huge honor to be among such amazing athletes and amazing people. Uh, big thank you to the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame for thinking me worthy of this. I actually remember playing basketball and cheerleading here at uh, the Boys and Girls Club, so very proud of where I'm from. Very proud to be among this group of people. I just want to say thank you to the coaches and my family who have supported me along the way. Special thanks to my dad who, <laughs> who pushed me and caught me and made me better. So thank you guys for this honor and have a good night. <laughs> she, uh, she works for a wine company, by the way. And, uh, and she just, uh, in the last several months, got transferred from New Orleans to, to Richmond. But uh, she didn't offer to bring any wine. <laughs> I met a very humbling type person here last year after the induction. And now that I've gotten to know her over the year, I realize just how wonderful Margaret Haggerty is. The Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories. Memories provide us access to the past as it constantly recedes away from us. We remember the on and, and honor the athletic, believe me, she's an athlete, the life achievement of Margaret Haggerty. She graduated in 1940. She went to Furman University. She went to Emory University. She wrote some stuff for me to read, and I'm going to read it. She was an avid golfer, three holes in one. Does anybody believe that? That's hard to believe. She loves to fly. She so soloed a 152 Cessna, and flew a twin. She was selected 
Miss Senior Cabarrus County in 1996. She won the gold marathon in 1996 world championship. She's in the Guinness Book of Records by being the oldest person to have completed a marathon on, in, on each of the seven continents. And track and field in 2012 voted her the third, I, I want to say the third fastest woman, 85 to 89. I know for a fact three weeks ago they had the senior games in Raleigh and she was on the way to, to Raleigh. Now I don't know if she competed, but it does not shock me that if she, she, she's shaking her head so she did compete. <laughs> Margaret Haggerty, we gladly and proudly introduce the oldest to date member to be inducted into the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you to the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame Committee for thinking that I am worthy of this honor. I truly appreciate it. And I would like to congratulate all the other nominees also. Um, I'm 90 now, and I'm not faster than a speeding bullet anymore. <laughs> but I have a few goals. I'm trying to uh, set new records for women 90 and over. And so far, um, I've gotten the 5K record, the 10K record, and the half marathon record since my birthday in March. So um, I am made of everything to come, not just the wonderful, marvelous what has been. When I was down at Margaret's house, uh, I looked over there, I was in the trophy room for she and her dad, and I looked over there, and she had a 10-speed bike. And I said, uh, you ride that bicycle? She said, yeah, but I got a flat tire. <laughs> Good Lord. <coughs> you know, another thing that a lot of people remember Margaret because she ran South, South Main Street all the time, you know. The Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories. Memories provide us access to the past as it constantly recedes away from us. Tonight we remember and honor the athlete and the life achievement of Natron Means. My wife pointed something out to me that she heard Chris Berman say one time when he was playing for the San Diego Charger. Nathan means business. And I think you're going to understand what I'm saying before I'm through. He graduated from Central Cabarrus High School also in 1990. All conference, all state, Shrine Bowl, played at UNC, played in the NFL for the, the, the Chargers. He's married to Shauna, has four children. He's still involved with the community. This is how he's involved. This was most impressive to me. In 2006, he joined the NFL Minority Coaching Fellowship Program, and he helped the Atlantic Falcons with their running backs. A year later, he did the same thing for the Panthers. He helped D'Angelo Williams. I don't know if he's still there or not, but I know Jonathan Stewart is. So that's, to me, that's just wonderful. He has a clinic that takes kids that playing in the neighborhood all the way up to mid-school, high school, pre-college, college, then the NFL. He's coaching kids today 
And I remember being at that age, and I could have, I can, I can really hook in with him because I think that would have been a very good time because, because of my age and because of helping kids. And on top of that, he's the offensive coordinator right now for Hope Well High School in Huntersville, North Carolina. Tonight, I am in the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame are honored to present Natron Means as a new member of the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Um, thank you very much um, to the uh, Cabarrus County Hall of Fame Sports Committee. Uh, there are so many people um, that I could thank. Uh, I'll do my best uh, to mention a few. Obviously, it starts with my mom, who's back there waving at me. Uh, she always uh, did everything she could to make sure that all of her boys had a chance uh, to participate in sports, um, working multiple jobs, but she made sure that we were there and uh, that we had everything that we needed. Um, coaches, um, too many to name, uh, family and friends that made sure uh, that we were able to get to practice uh, and to have everything that we needed uh, in order to be successful. I'd like to thank my wife, uh, my kids uh, who are here on the front row. Uh, I'll tell you, it means uh, so much more uh, to me receiving this award, you know, that these guys are here. My son on the front row, my daughters, uh, beautiful children. Thank you very much, and uh, I appreciate it. Nathan, I didn't leave out Shauna, did I? Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure that I, you know, I wasn't so sure that I didn't. Lenore Ryan University, Lenore Ryan Bear. That's where I spent a bunch of my days. The Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories. Memories provide us access to the past as it constantly receives away from us. Tonight, we remember and honor the athlete, the coach, the counselor, the life achievement of Benny Moose, Benny Arnold Moose, I was told by his wife. I tried to give him another name, a nice name, Alan. Born and raised in Cabarrus County. Went to elementary all the way up to high school. He played, he played for Arden Ray. Graduated in 1966. Played four sports like all of us did in the 50s and, and the 60s, you know. If there's a glove or a ball or we were out there, we were hustling them. He played in the East-West All-Star game. He won all the trophies in football, all conference, uh, most valuable for his team, and, and he was all Cabarrus County. A bunch of us were. <laughs> he played in the East-West game. I got a couple of Lenore Ryan boys here, and they're going to be impressed. He got a full scholarship to Lenore Ryan College. Now, believe me, in 50s and in 60s, there's only 26 full scholarships that all, Lenore Ryan offered. And believe me, they got, there's a bunch of us got $65 or $100 raise. It was pretty tough to get a full scholarship. But he did that. He, ta he has taught and coached in Cabarrus County for, uh, for right at 40 years. Tonight, I better mention this because uh, I may get sued if I don't. He is married to Bonnie, and he has two, two children, Benjamin and Bonita. And tonight, we are honored to present Benny Arnold Moose into the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you. Uh, it's such a great honor to be here among all these 
great athletes tonight. Uh, and I was looking in, over some of the programs and all the accomplishments they accomplished. And uh, their short lifespan is just unreal what they've done. And uh, whenever you mentioned uh, you gave the uh, youngest award of you ever and the oldest, I thought you were talking about me to be the <laughs> oldest there for one time. Uh, also, I remember Natron. Uh, I remember him very well because when I was coaching at Mount Pleasant and standing on the sidelines, all I saw of Natron was just going from one side to the other and then he'd go back and the officials would do this for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, I am not a public speaker by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I would rather be uh, practicing with Arden Ray three a day in a hot summer day in August than to be standing in front of a crowd uh, like this. But I am very humbled to be standing here and honored to uh, be nominated for this committee or for this uh, award. Uh, it, it's unbelievable. Um, that I was even nominated, which I thank Don Scott, Larry Honeycutt, and Betty for their nominations. And, and by the way, Don used to be uh, originally from Concord, but he wised up and moved to Mount Pleasant. So that was, that was good for Don. Uh, I'm glad that uh, I'm here that Arden Ray was inducted into the Hall of Fame. He was one of my coaches, and uh, he was the biggest influence on me going on to school and also uh, attending four years at LR. Uh, God has blessed me great with uh, a great family. My mother's here tonight. She turned 90 in, in uh, last January. Proud that she's here. My brother, Leonard, which moved from Texas this year with the Stetson hat on. Uh, and his family's here with us tonight, and I appreciate them. Also, my uh, mother and father-in-law, Bill and Florence Winsel, and my sister-in-law, uh, Frida, uh, they come tonight. And Bill used to be a uh, Concord fan. He would go to all the Concord games on Friday night. He didn't miss any. He was there, uh, even the away games he went to. And I started dating his daughter, and I, he started coming to Mount Pleasant a little bit more. I don't know why, but he did. And also, he attended just about every one of the football games at uh, uh, four years at Lenore Ryan, home or away. So I do appreciate them. I'd like to introduce my uh, family, uh, Benita, uh, and her husband, David, and their children, Connor, Claire, and uh, Carter. They're sitting over here on the side. My son, Benji, and his sons, Gavin and Keegan. Uh, you know, if you have any grandkids, you know they keep you very, very young and um, keep you active the, all the time. I, there's a funny story that happened one time that uh, my granddaughter uh, came into me and I came in. I was tired. I sat down in the lounge chair and she came up to me and wanted to do something. I don't know what it was. I don't remember what time it was. But I said, just wait a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll be with you. Well. She went back in the kitchen and just told my wife, Bonnie, which um, she calls her Nana. She said, uh, Nana, I don't know what's wrong with Poppy, but I sure know this. The older he gets, the longer he wants to sit. <laughs> so uh, that was my granddaughter. Uh, and I can't leave out this person here. Uh, this person has been with me. I don't know how many years. <laughs> 45 years we've been married. I met her, I met, I know, I met her as a sophomore in high school. She's the love of my life. She's always been my greatest supporter, uh, my friend, uh, my um, critic, and uh, I deserve most of the criticism I get, about 98.5% of it I deserve. But I do thank you, and uh, you're a blessing to me. Thank you. You know, whenever you're growing up, you want to, uh, all your people or your grandkids or your, your kids to have great coaches. And I was very fortunate to be uh, able to have a lot of great coaches in my career. I had Hanley Painter, which you know very well, uh, Walt Cornwell, Danny Williams at Lenore Ryan. And while I was there, we had a winning season all four years, won the conference and tied for conference several years. So had a real good uh, career and uh, coaches at Lenore Ryan. The three coaches that meant the most to me and made influenced my life more than anything else 
uh, in my career in athletics was Arden Ray, Morgan Walker, and Leon Inslee. Those three individuals uh, probably influenced me more than anyone could imagine, more they even know. Uh, and Arden, it's good to see that he was inducted tonight. He was a man that I respected. He's a man that I admired. And also he is a man that I feared, if you know Arden. Uh, because every Friday night, if we come into the locker room for a halftime pep talk, and he or we were behind or we weren't playing very well, well, the back seat was full. The front seat was empty at uh, halftime because of uh, the way Arden could express himself. Um, when Arden won a football game, he always gave the credit to his team. And that's the mark of a good coach. When we lost, he always accepted the loss. It was his responsibility. It was his choice to do that. He was a great man, a great coach, and I'm proud to say that I was able to uh, be under him. He always told us to win with humility, which is easy to win, but he also told us to lose with a lot of class. He had a heart of gold. All three of these coaches had a heart of gold. They'd do anything for you. And uh, I'm proud to say that they were not uh, only my coach, but they were my mentor and they were my lifelong friend. Also, they all displayed great Christian values, which I admired greatly. And uh, I tried to pattern myself after their example. Uh, when Tony called me, to say that I was going to receive this award. Uh, I was honored, but I thought of all the teammates that I had had in my years of playing athletics. And when they gave me this medal here, I realized that not one individual made this medal. Many hands took to make this medal. An architect, a designer, a seamstress, all these went in to make this medal that was placed on me today. So I would like to thank my teammates because they were the ones and the coaches that gave this medal to me. Again, I thank my family, I thank the coaches, I thank my teammates, I thank my friends, and especially I thank the Hall of Fame and the committee. Thank you very much. And may God bless each and every one of you. That's a good Lenore Ryan boy right there. Yeah, Stas did a good job on Arden Ray after what you just said. Yeah, we always won. We always won. Heck, we, I didn't lose but twice while I was in college won a national championship. So, so uh, we were used to winning, and we always won with dignity, just like you said. And we never, never left a bad impression away from home or at home. So anyway, it's, uh, it's good to hear that kind of stuff coming from a couple, uh, about 10 years later, you know. Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories. Memories provide us access to the past as it constantly recedes away from us. Tonight, we remember and we honor the athlete and the life achievement of Melissa Marston Howard. Melissa was 5'4". She's 5'4", 115 pounds. I don't know, Bob. How high is the hurdle? Isn't it at least two, two and a half feet? Yeah. <laughs> she graduated from A.L. Brown in 1989. She won the 100 meter, 200 meter, 100 meter hurdle. Not just one year, freshman, sophomore, senior, junior, senior. I mean, that's amazing. That's just amazing. Then she went to Appalachian on a grant. She did the same thing there. She made a little all-American all at Appalachian. 
And then in the Olympics in 2000, and 2000 in Sydney, she won two bronze. And then she won one bronze the year at or 04. She won races all over the United States, all over the world, I'm sorry, not just the United States, all over the world. She coasted Appalachian. She also coasted the University of South Carolina. She's known as probably the greatest track and field athlete that ever North Carolina produced. She is married to Joseph Howard. They live in Lewis, Louisville, Texas. I've talked to her several times, more than that on the computer. She's sad that she could not come, but maybe down the road, if she moves back this way and we have an, continue to have inductions, she can come by and introduce herself. But anyway, she has two sons, she has a son seven and one two. Tonight, we are honored to introduce Melissa Morrison Howard as a new member of the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Her brother is here to accept the award. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. In the garden okay. Okay. Said she couldn't keep up with her. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I um, would like to say one thing about Melissa. At age 30, I thought I could run. I just moved back here from San Diego, and she got a little rowdy at the house, so I started to chase her. She turned around backwards and said, you can't catch me. And I couldn't. Yeah, and I, I still can't believe 5'4", and she could run those hurdles like that. It's amazing. Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories. Memories provide us access to the past as it's constantly constantly recedes away from us. Tonight we honor, we remember and we honor the athletic and life achievement of Amy Privet Perko. First of all, she did it right. She graduated from A.L. Brown in 1983. She was salutatorian for her class. She did the same thing at Wake Forest University. She, we had a, a former inductee not too long ago that, that uh, Amy may beat her because she, she not only played basketball, she played softball and tennis. She was all state basketball. She got a grant. Like most of these people, they got grants to go to college. And she did. She went to Wake Forest. And while at Wake Forest, she is either honorable mention, or all, all, honorable mention All-American or, or just honorable mention in all ACC tournament. In 2000, Wake Forest introduced her into the, their Hall of Fame. Last year, she was uh, the speaker for A.L. Brown High School. What really impresses me about Amy is this. She was just, in 2005, elected executive director of the Knight Commission. And what they do is they set policies for colleges and universities throughout the United States to assure that they demonstrate equal time and energy for student age education and athletic endeavors. In other words, they're policemen. They know what's good about college life and what's not good about college life. Amy is married, lives in Federal, to Rick, her husband, and she has two daughters, Anna and Kate. Tonight, Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is honored to present the induction for Amy into the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Oh, 
I was looking for you. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, Tony. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's, it's good to be here. It's good to be back in the hometown. Thanks to Tony and to the committee uh, for this honor. Um, when, when Tony told me who else was going to be honored, I really was flattered to be in this group, and especially because Haskell, you were an inspiration to watch in football. Not to, not to put a little bit more age on you, but I really enjoyed going to A.L. Brown and watching Haskell stand back play. But it's really good to be here, and I want to thank my teachers, my coaches, my teammates, my family, my friends, who really supported me and, uh, you know, really are part of, of this as well, because they're all obviously part of my story. And uh, this occasion really provided a really great opportunity for me to reach out to my former high school coach, Donna Morris, who's here and, and able to be here with me tonight. And uh, Donna was a great basketball player uh, when, she, when she was in high school as well. But uh, I'm really glad, Donna, you were able to be here. And uh, as you kind of go through your athletic career, and then you look back on uh, the good things that happened, you realize how lucky you were to, to uh, have those particular people in your life at that particular time. And Coach Morris was one of those individuals. And I see one of my teammates here as well, Tracy. I didn't know she was going to be here. I probably haven't seen you since high school, but as you look out, you see those faces. And, and Tracy's another one that just, you know, how great to see your face here because of my teammate. You're obviously part of this as well. So thank you again. It's good to be here. I was, uh, while I was sitting there, I, I noticed that we have some applications here. And, uh, and, and especially that 2001 and 2002 softball team, there's got to be some great, great girls on that team. So there's some application here, and I'd love to see them. One of the problems that we've had is, and I introduced, uh, Doug was introducing the, the uh, the head man, the head uh, AD in, in Cabarrus County. The problem is we had them all in, fed them pizza, all the ADs from all the seven high schools. They're all young boys. And that's bad because cause you've got to be out of high school at least 10 years to be inducted. So, so they don't know. They, don't, they probably don't know you, you know? <laughs> they probably don't. So it, it's a problem, and, and, we, and to tell you the truth, I think out of the seven guys, along with uh, uh, Brian, uh, we got zilch. We got applications from, from the older, older community, which is okay because they saw us all. They know what was good and what was bad. So, so uh, if, if you get a nomination and you throw somebody that's worthy and been out of high school 10 years, then we want them. We want to, we want to see the application. And let's see where we are now, <laughs> now that I've got off the track. Okay, baby Huey. That's what I think about when I think about Lance Smith. Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and, and memories. Memories provide us access to that constant recedes away from us. Tonight, we remember the athlete and the life achievement of Lance Smith. Can you imagine playing high school football at 6'2", well, it's actually 6'3 or 4", 283 pounds? Would you like to, you like running behind, you didn't get to run behind him though, did you? No. But that would have been fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. But anyway, he was um, A.L. Brown High School grad in 81, and uh, he uh, was a lineman of the year, played in the Shrine Bowl. He was an offensive tackle. Man, I love good offensive tackles. He was all-conference, all-American. He played in the, South Piedmont, in the Southeastern Conference, folks, like somebody else we're going to meet. 
He played in the Southeast Conference. That's the greatest football conference in the United States. He played four years. He made, to add insult to injury, he made All-American at LSU. He was quite a player. He played 12 seasons in the NFL. He started 165 games, but he played in 182. He was drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals. And of course, a couple of years later, like they do in the NFL, they changed names. Then he was Phoenix Cardinal. And then he ended up his career with the New York Giants. He is married to Mako, Miko, has three sons, and lives in Charlotte. Two of the sons played college ball, I can imagine. And one is still in high school. Tonight, we are honored. Oh, by the way, one thing. I know that Roy Thomas was probably the best lineman they talk about in Concord High School, but I imagine they're still talking about Lance Smith as the greatest lineman that ever played at Kannapolis because of all the things he's done and did. Tonight, Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is honored to present Lance Smith into being inducted into the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. And I haven't seen Lance yet. Has anybody seen Lance yet? He did tell me when I talked to him on the phone that he was going to try his best to be here, but he is involved in some things that would that cost him to travel a lot, and he may have spent time in New York City. But we will make sure that Lance gets his award. <laughs> Is anybody tired yet? <laughs> well, stand back. I reckon we saved the best for last, right? <laughs> oh, boy. Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame is about records and memories. Memories provide us access to the past as it constantly sees away from us. We remember and we honor the athletic and life achievement of Haskell LeVon Standback. 1970 grad, grad of A.L. Brown High School. All conference, all state, played in the Surround Bowl, this guy scored 22 touchdowns when he was a senior. God, I don't believe I scored 22 touchdowns in four years. And of course, Tennessee was watching Southeastern Conference. And they recruited him and he played halfback for them for four years. He played for the Cincinnati Bengals. He was drafted by the Bengals. But he didn't get to spend much time with him because they traded him to the Atlantic Falcons. And I bet the Falcons was happy because they made a running back out of him for six years. And I think he was happy because the Bengals had drafted him as a punt return and a kickoff specialist. In 1973, he played in the Gator Bowl. And, of course, he is the most valuable player. He's married to Doris. He has two adult daughters, and they both graduated from the University of Tennessee. True to your heart, right? He worked for the Norfolk Southern Corporation for 28 years upon retirement in 12. He has spent some time with, with TAP, which is uh, fighting poverty, minority poverty. He is also a board member of the museum, uh, and I would take it the museum being the uh, train museum. And he's an avid golfer. You ever got a hole in one? Oh, okay. Well, you, you rub elbows with this lady. <laughs> Tonight, we are honored to present to you Hassel Standback as a new member of the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. Haskell, would you please come forward?
Anybody? I want to say one thing about Haskell Standback. I was in graduate school at UT his senior year, and Tennessee was recruiting Haskell. And Bill Watts was coming over to uh, Knoxville to uh, see a ball game. And he had tickets, and I had the audacity to go down to the gym and uh, ask the coach if he could, I could swap my student ticket for a ticket beside a Bill so we could talk together. The head coach did not come out, but Bill Battle, who was uh, one of Haskell's coaches at Tennessee, came out and we started chit-chatting for 15 to 20 minutes. Bill Battle knew more about Haskell stand back than I did, and I taped Haskell's ankles for two years, and it was the best pair of ankles I ever taped in my life. It was like a racehorse, man. All right. But first of all, because when I talked to Tony, he said, he said to be prepared to speak for five minutes. I said, man, it's five minutes a long time. You know, I don't know if I can do that. But uh, first I want to say thank you and, I, and, and, and give, give my appreciation and my uh, sincere thanks to the committee for uh, not only being nominated but being selected for the uh, Cabarrus County Hall of Fame. You know, because uh, most things you start out, if it's, if it's going to be good, you got to have a good foundation. You know, start out at, at home, and I got my mom and my three sisters and, and niece that are here. And, you know, I was oldest of six kids, and my mom was, was a hardworking young, young lady, and so it was either play sports or stay home and keep the kids, you know. <laughs> and my three sisters, I always give them credit because they're the youngest, you know, make you go out and you want to play and, and, uh, and, and instead of being home taking care of the children. But, uh, but we all came out, out of the family. Mom did a great job. I want to say thank you, Mom, and thank my sisters and my niece for being here uh, this evening. Um, you know, the strange thing about it is, is that, you know, th things came so easy at a young age, and they, they and probably can, I'm sure guys here can, can attest to that. Uh, you know, you, you get out and you do things because they're easy, because you enjoy, they're easy to accomplish certain things, and you, you enjoy the competitive type of spirit and the camaraderie that you, that you have. And also teach you disciplines, you know, to uh, uh, have respect for, God-given talents, have respect for a fellow person, uh, you know, to have respect for your elders, you know, and, and it just seems as though uh, uh, nature has got his hands full because, you know, those, those types of, of attributes seem to be dwindling quite a bit uh, nowadays. Uh, you know, social media has done so many things for that uh, because, you know, when we, when we were growing up, I think we had a television that uh, black and white you know, and that was later on in life, you know, so you didn't get a chance to see a lot of things to, to emulate. Uh, but we had, we had guys in my neighborhood that I couldn't carry the jockey straps. You know, it was just they weren't at the right place at the right time to, to be able to uh, receive some of the, the advantages that I did. But uh, I want to say that, you know, I, I'm proud to be from Cabarrus County. Uh, <laughs> Don't believe, don't believe any of the stories that Tony tells you about Concord spiders or whatever, because... Uh, <laughs> but, but there was a picture uh, when, I, when I was committing to go to University of Tennessee, and then we recruited a fellow Concord spider by the name of Andy Troxler, yeah. and uh, took a picture in this very uh, place here years ago. And uh, so I got a special place in my heart for the Concord Boys and Girls Club. But uh, so I'm proud, proud to be a wonder, I never really want to call them little wonders, but proud to be a wonder, proud to be a part of, uh, of, of this uh, group that you're putting together. And uh, again, thank you for the award and appreciate talking. Thank you. Now, I'm gonna, we're gonna do a little bit different uh, this year than we've ever done before. We're going to, the people that received uh, a certificate or, or uh, a medal, I would like for y'all to leave right now and go into the, into the hospitality room. Don't take your family with you, just you go into the hospitality room. Uh, Bob, I got a plan. <laughs>
And while they're doing that, uh, I want to point out now that there's applications here, and we'd love, we'd love to to see you. Uh, we'd love to see you pull some of them and send in some nominations. Nominations stop August 15th every year, uh, and so so. And another thing that that we would like to to point out is that. Uh, uh, as you can see, a couple of the committee members, including myself, are getting a little older. So if there's any people that would like to take a chance and work with us, I think we had three meetings before we had the, the uh, voting this year. And so it's not really time consuming, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. Now we got Andy, Andy Andrews, who is a, a member of the committee, and he's going to, to, to uh, to make a special announcements here. I, I hope that I haven't forgotten anything. If I have, I'm sorry. Thank you, Tony. What a great evening. Uh, when the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame was uh, envisioned nearly four years ago, the Boys and Girls Club of Cabarrus County, uh, specifically the Executive Director, Valerie Melton, and the Athletic Director, uh, Donnie Whittington, supported a concept of a countywide Sports Hall of Fame enthusiastically. Uh, for each of the past three years, including tonight, the Boys and Girls Club has graciously provided the space for us to do the uh, ceremony. And as you know, Donnie was honored tonight with induction. In appreciation, the Sports Hall of Fame would like to make a contribution to the Boys and Girls Club of Cabarrus County and would especially like to thank Valerie for her valuable assistance for these past few years by presenting this plaque. Valerie. Thank you. Whoops. I lost it. This plaque, which reads, Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame Award Certificate this certifies that Valerie Melton, Executive Director, Boys and Girls Club of Cabarrus County, in recognition of her outstanding support, contribution, and dedication to Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame's endeavors, is hereby inducted as an honorary member into the Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame, 24th day of October, 2013. Congratulations, Valerie. Yeah, absolutely. If anybody knows me, I tried out for every sport there was and didn't make it through a season of anything. I really appreciate this. I take back every mean thing I've ever said about any of the gentlemen here. <laughs> um, I often joke when Donnie came to me about this, I said, that's fine, Donnie, but it's yours. You know, it's yours to take care of, and, and that's fine. And he told me it would be, so I know he gets tickled that he added a little bit of workload to me. But it's not been much because my staff does everything that needs to be done for tonight. We really appreciate them coming here. We're glad to host them. We're glad to have all of you here. And, and as I look around and I talk to the folks that said that they remember this club, the folks that have been inducted tonight, you know, we have about 300 kids that were in the building. You probably saw them and heard them when you came in. And I bet there's some of them, they're going to be up here one day. So we appreciate you supporting the Sports Hall of Fame, but think about supporting us. And, and I'm thinking that we ought to get a little link from our Facebook page to a Facebook page for these guys so y'all can visit it and see all the inductees and keep up with what's going on. So we're going to work on this this next year. Thank you. And thank you, guys. All right, wait a minute. A couple, uh, one thing that I wanted to point out, since the, the members have gone into the other room, one of my former athletes designed the Hall of, Hall of Fame ring. And it's a great Christmas gift or a birthday gift. Also, you can get a medal with a necklace for a woman. You know, my wife's always looking for necklaces. And this would be a great, and, and of course it'll have the, Cabarrus County emblem on the front and with their name and the year that they're inducted. And I did not do that. If you'll notice on the program, this is a picture. There's a picture of the ring, and it makes for a very outstanding ring. 
and uh, 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 you might want to do uh, consider that as a really good Christmas gift for someone, it, especially if they did not uh, get a ring when they got inducted in college. But anyway, uh, uh, Bob Mullen had one more word to say. Wayne Williams is our treasurer. Programs, plaques, certificates, all these things, they're not free. <laughs> and if you would like to make a contribution of any sort, any size amount, Wayne Williams, is Wayne in the auditorium right now? Yeah. No, he's not. He, he's probably over in the hospitality room. But Wayne Williams is our uh, treasurer, and he would be glad to take a donation from you if you uh, feel free. Uh, thank you very much. Again, I want to thank you for coming to Cabarrus County Sports Hall of Fame. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I, may, I feel like we've made a lot of people happy. We, we've seen some very deserving type people. Uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys again. Uh, right before the Concord Canapolis game next year, uh, they're supposed to be tomorrow. Yeah, but they didn't. They changed the schedule on me. But what the heck? Maybe they'll go back to the time that they did for a couple years. But uh, the spider still won, right? But uh, uh, Doug may have a word to say too. But we. But, but, what? Oh yeah, the hospitality room is open. Feel free to share. <laughs>